Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Javon Show. I am your host today, and for the foreseeable future, you can call me Javon Martin. I've got my preacher's rag here because we are about to have an amazing show today with an amazing individual. Her name is Latisse Crawford. You may have seen her on season two of Sunday's Best. And as she's making her way into the studio, I have asked a special guest host to come and help me out today. Ladies and gentlemen, also from season two of Sunday's Best, Mr. Maurice Griffin. How you doing, Maurice? I'm good, man. What's up? Man, listen, it is an honor and a pleasure to be in your company today. While we are waiting for Latisse to come into the studio, tell me or tell the other people, because you know I know you, but for the people that don't know you, who is Maurice Griffin? Maurice Griffin is somebody who likes to cook. That's what I'm eating right now. But <laughs> he's a true Sunday best. Um, I, I'm just an alumni of it, and the Lord's been good. I'm actually charting on the billboards at the moment with my new single, Prove Me I'm Yours. It's, I mean, it's going viral everywhere. I'm so thankful to everybody that's supporting it, uh, all peoples in Radio Land. And I just moved to Los Angeles. And so this is a big move for me. And, you know, it's been crazy good. I come from a streamline of great singers from Chicago, Great Boy Production, New Direction, all those. That's my heyday. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little Chicago, from, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, when you were in Chicago, what was your journey? And we're going to ask the same thing to Latisse, but what was your journey to Sunday's Best? Mine, it was really, really good. It was a dream come true that I thought would never happen. You know, you always look at it growing up. You just never know. It. You just never knew it would actually happen to you. But, you know, uh, faith without works is dead. That's what the word said. And so I'm a faith believer that if you never give up, you'll always reach the end goal you always reach the end goal. And I was um, blessed to actually be on the show. And uh, I mean, when I tell you if I was able to do it again, I would. We we connected with so many people, Donald Lawrence, Mary Mary, B.B. Winans, Kurt Franklin, <laughs> Kira Shear. I mean, you name it, they were all there. And just to be connected to all those great individuals, it was phenomenal. And that was just the name of a few people, Donald Lawrence, Kurt Franklin, yes. blah, blah, blah. Um, but I was well, like... <laughs> like I know you, I know right. you. Now we got to be all extra. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of people that um want to just shout out you real quick. Um, Pastor Darrell Davis Knight says she loves prove me. Thank you. Wow. And um, that's my version. That's the remix. Oh, okay. You know, I was like, oh. Riley do remixes. <laughs> Yeah, look, and then uh, maybe you know this young lady right here, Miss Gigi Burrell. She wants Gigi. to thank you, Marie. I miss you, Gigi. Well, go back to Houston if you're missing it in. No, she wants me to go back over there and, and cook her some mac and cheese because I cook them, I bake a good mean mac and cheese with a little bacon on top. Oh. <laughs> Those are the rumors that I've heard that you can cook a little bit now. Um, real quick, while we're waiting on the teas, your um, recording was in Houston, Texas, right? Yes, I, I did my live recording in 2016, and uh, my first single from that was Judah, and that came out in 2000, and I believe 18. And then after that, Prove Me I'm Yours dropped last year to radio, and so that's been going really, really well. And uh, I'm on the verge of putting out yet another one, but I'm I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna release this record. I mean, you know, now that the digital age is like full throttle. I mean, yeah. it just came straight to us. So uh, just be praying with me on that. You know, I don't have a date yet, but yet and still, we are ready to mm -hmm. release it. I mean, we had some of the greats. You had Alexis Spike. You had Lawrence Flowers. You had Iana Crawley. You had some nice. great singers. Gay Arbuckle. I don't know if you remember her I'm from Dallas, but amazing gifts, amazing talents. Well, I'm just glad to share that with the world. We are definitely looking forward to it. Uh, so now that we know who my co-host is, let's bring in the woman of the 30 minutes. She hails from season two of Sunday Best. That's where she was born. That's where she was raised. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Latisse, season two, three, four, and five. Let's Miss Latisse Crawford. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, La Latisse is not here. Latisse is here. <laughs> you know what? I'm from Chicago and I got a slur. So everything has an accent on it. That's all. So while she's frozen in time and, <laughs> and laughing at my joke, um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows <laughs> that you are here. And um, 
they, people have been waiting on you to be on this show today. So for those who are unfamiliar and because oh, I have both names and bios, please let us know who is Latisse Crawford. Oh man, Latisse Crawford is a mom. Um, I am a singer, a writer, um, a cook, a uh, actress, a model. Um, I try to dibble and dabble in it all, but for the most part, I'm a lover of God and um, I'd say a pretty strong woman. Yes, you are a very, very, very strong woman. And you have to be strong to deal with somebody like Maurice Griffin. What was Maurice? <laughs> because I know him, so I can say that. I know him, so I can say that. So we're going to ask Maurice to you. Maurice, what was it like working with Latisse on the show? Latisse was my big sister. My big little sister, mm. you know, um, I call her the Whitney Houston of our season. When I tell you, she kick her leg and throw that leg, that hand out, that was it. <laughs> Don't fuck with her. It's over. <laughs> you can't touch it. You can't touch it. <laughs> All right. But uh, it was fun working with her. I love her to death, you know. I mean, love her to life. You know, she really has a great <laughs> gift. And um, I can't wait to do a song with her. That would be amazing. Yeah, listen. Anyway, uh, because I'm the listen. king. Uh, tell us about the single that came out, uh, Amazing. What What was your process for putting out Amazing? Uh, the last seven years of my life has been a process of loss, grief, um, relearning. <laughs> So, am I still still there? Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry, it was okay. in and out. I'm um, sorry, I live in the mountains, so my signal is, yeah, I live in the mountains, so my signal is here sometimes. But I was just that, um, parents, um, you know, friends, family members. Um, so I was writing about the dark piece of my life, and I thought that I looked a mess, living a mess, and I just didn't care. He was like, yeah, I see you all up. I see that you don't want to pray. I see that you're feeling like you're in shape. I'm kind of all of that. So he stopped the wall. Book I was putting up people I was trying to keep out, and he was like, No, no, don't work for me. You can't keep me out. I don't care how you look. I'm and I kind of thought that that might happen. Um, her signal, she's in the mountains, so she got pushed out a little bit. So she's going to try to reconnect with us. Uh, Maurice, was it kind of troubled on your end as well? A little bit? Just a little bit, but a little bit. So it kicked her out. I didn't do it. Trying to take over, but we gonna bind that spirit up. Well, listen, lift the hands and receive it. Yes. Um, the virus, you can't have us. <laughs> Are you back, Latisse? Well, you know it is strong in New York. It is strong. It is strong, especially when you live in the mountains. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get Latisse um, squared away. And while our producers and everybody work on it in the back end, Maurice, you were talking about that next single that's coming out. What is the name of it and um, what's been the holdup? So because Prove Me I'm Yours is growing and going strong on radio, I didn't want to be... Um, uh, premature and releasing another song. So I just want to make sure that I did things in decent and in order. Um, it's going really, really strong. Like I said, I am working on releasing another song probably in the next three or four months. So the song I can't really reveal to you because I can't really reveal it to you, but I will say it's going to be worth the wait. It's going to be worth the wait. Now, we know that um, Teddy Riley does remixes. Are you going to bring in Teddy Riley so that maybe Latisse can do a, a remix to the, the release when it comes out? Maybe we can get the, the the version and then the remix version featuring Latisse Crawford. Listen. Okay. If he say okay, okay. then okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you, can, you heard it here first. <laughs> the Javon Show put together Maurice and Latisse. Maurice Latisse. See, see how it works. See how it works. I did this thing. 
Now, uh, Latisse, you are a relationship um, consultant, right? You do workshops and things like that on relationships. I'm not a relationship consultant, but I am a certified life coach in relationship facilitation and right. ecology and in cognitive behavior. Now, all those things that I cannot spell means that you are able to really <laughs> help out people um, who are going through something, correct? Well, I help people help themselves. So uh, life coaching is a little bit different than, well, quite a bit different than being a counselor. So, you know, I'm not telling people how to be better. I'm utilizing what they have in them already that they may not be aware of and helping them get to a better place with their own strength, their own energy. Um, life coaching is all about being conscious of what is and what exists and then figuring out how you want to exist or exit from it. So um, ex ex exist in it and exit from it. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just making them realize real life and that they have choices and um, that they have the, build uh, the ability to choose them. Um, that that's really what it is. And I appreciate you helping people with that. But Maurice <laughs> has a question. I'm gonna let Maurice um, ask you his question. I hate you so much. <laughs> so my question <laughs> is this: I'm dealing with depression with this COVID nineteen. What can you do to help me? <laughs> help us, Matisse. Listen, okay. No, seriously. That's the real thing. I know there are a lot of people who just need to be out the house. I'm a hermit on a regular basis. So when I leave the road, I'm in this house and you're not going to find me. I told you I live in the mountains. So you're not going to find me. But for people who are suffering with any kind of, you know, bad fever or feeling like they're getting depressed or whatever, because of it, one, you can step outside and get some fresh air. If you have a driveway, if you have a backyard, Park, but find that in the house. You know, stop. Don't think about what you can't do. Think about all the things you can do. So, if you wanted to write a book or you wanted to just get little things done, if you just need some sleep, take advantage of the time that you have and realize that it's a gift. It is time to do all of those things that you usually say you're too busy for when you're outside. Just change your your perspective on it. You know, and don't think of it as I'm trapped or I can't get out. Think of it as, like I said, a gift that you will never get again. <laughs> this kind of time where one, especially as an artist, we're not in competition at this point. We're literally all on the same playing ground. Now some you know, may have some more advantage or some more access, but we're literally all starting from the same point now. We're all trying to be creative and, and be on as many social outlets as we can doing interviews or trying to write music, but be a little bit more forgiving of yourself and realize you don't have to figure it out and save the world all at this time. We got time, you know, and that's a gift. So try to focus on the positive and not the, the, the negative. You don't mind me asking, how are you going to be different once all of this is over? Or will you be a, a different person than you were when we went into this? I definitely will be different. Um, I feel like for myself that I am becoming much more appreciative of little things. You know, something as simple as going to a grocery store. Now, for me, that's fun. I, I, I cook, so I like going to the grocery store. I like going and doing little crafts and stuff. So just seeing that those little things, you know, are no longer a simple task, you know, it makes you appreciate the things that you get to do a lot more. It's definitely making me more appreciative of the little bit of gigs I was having. You know, when you work for yourself, you're dependent on all of these streams of things that come in that, you know, lift up your royalties and help you make it through the month. So I think for me now, I will not be complaining about how much I don't have. I will be appreciating what I do. <laughs> That's what's up. Now, we are halfway through the show and every day at 1215, we do what we call a song break. And I know that your management didn't give me permission to ask you to sing, so that's why I'm doing it behind closed doors. Latisse, I need to know a song that your fans would be surprised that you know. That Whether it's a Billie Eilish or an Aaliyah or a Alanis Morissette, what is something that you can share with us during this um, song break, something that we wouldn't know that you know? Um, I am a big jazz fan. I, um, when I was younger, my parents were very, very strict apostolic. Um, and so I wasn't able or supposed to be listening to jazz or, you know, anything like that, but I would listen to jazz and the blues because it sounded so much like gospel that 
they didn't really know the difference if they were just passing by my room real quick. So I'm not as big on a lot of the more popular music, but I do love jazz music. So Honeysuckle Rose is one of my favorite songs. So Ooh. I can sing that if you want me to sing. Well, well, don't judge okay. me, saints. <laughs> a little bit of that real quick, if you don't mind. Sure, uh, let's see. Um, every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you out with me. I don't blame goodness knows. Honeysuckle rose, when you're passing by flowers, you've been sigh, and I know the reason why. You're much sweeter, goodness knows. Honeysuckle rose, don't buy sugar. You'll just have to touch my cup. You're my sugar, it's sweet when you start it up. When I'm taking sips from your tasty lips, seems the honey fairly trips. Your confection, goodness knows. Honeysuckle rose, believe me. Don't buy sugar, you just have to touch my cup. Cause you my sugar, it's sweet when you start. Read up the honey drips from your lips. Seems the honey belly drips your confection. Goodness knows, honey suckle rose. <laughs> I can't stand y'all. <laughs> what do you say after that? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just gonna leave me? <laughs> um, um, <laughs> y'all just left me. <laughs> Maurice, your turn, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> hang for now, I'm done. Uh uh, because this boy's throat, okay? Good. Okay. Um, in the words of T.L. Holmes, um, interview over. That's May the Lord Watch between. Can you do that after a jazz cat? Between while we absent. Anyway. <laughs> that was beautiful. Amazing. <laughs> I love her. When I first heard Latisse sing, when I tell you it was. It was heaven to my ears. I was like, oh my God, Aww. so much talent in the in the room when we were all meeting together for the first time and we actually got to hear each other sing. I was just marveled by so much talent that Donald Lawrence and the whole team for uh, when we were on Sunday's Best produced and put together. I was just marveled at her. And um, I mean, I'm, it was amazing. Her dad, her dad's the bomb for real. Oh, I love him. My dad. I know. <laughs> like... He talked about you so much. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was talking to him, bragging about you. He's like, oh, that's my daughter. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, like, it was just so cold, so, so cool. So um, you're amazing. You're amazing. See, so many people don't know, Maurice, that when we were on the show, thank you. So many people don't know that when we were on the show that you and I, we were hangout mm -hmm. buddies. My first uh, outing was with Maurice and John John. They were like, we going to the mall. Let's go. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, OK. So we went out. We went to the mall and we ate and, you know, did what we do. But they received me so well. I came on that show and I was like, I'm telling you, I'm a hermit. So I was like, as big as my personality is, I am so shy and reserved and like, ah. And they just were like, Come on, get up. You going? And that gave me so much confidence and just the love. Like every show, it was. It wasn't. It didn't feel like a competition to us because we were all cheering each other on. I remember telling Maurice, like, "Let me borrow a little bit of your range because I sound like a man. I need a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit of what I you got going on over there." Like <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a little bit of soprano, okay? <laughs> so, um, don't I'm you say that. I, I would love to hear y'all do a country song. Well, anyway, let me let me get back. You want to do one? This is the second request I've gotten for a country song this week. Second request. 
I wasn't prepared. So I'm about to be like a Ron Stone Cowboy. <laughs> I'm about to. Y'all don't understand. I think <laughs> once you all release both Maurice's remix to his song and the country song that were both my ideas, that you all both come back to the Javon show and that we go ahead and just debut it here because this is the place for debuts. I've got to say, we get a little, a little EP going. <laughs> I'll produce it. I'll make sure it gets out. Um, and I want to play it just for my Let me hear it both of you. Um, I'm also a huge fan of John oh and Hezekiah Walker. I don't know if you heard. Um, and I make these I make see. these transitions Let real see. good, don't I? I? I do some stuff. They're doing a battle <laughs> on Sunday at six o'clock. Kind of like the oh. Teddy P and uh, or Teddy P, Teddy Riley and um, Babyface did theirs. My question to you, John P. Key or Hezekiah Walker, who's going to take it on Sunday? I'm going to start with you, Latisse, first. Um, I think it might be a tie. I think they both have some incredible hits. And I mean, I think it doesn't even matter if you're a fan of either one of them. Like you can't deny the songs. You know what I mean? Those, I mean, I'm from New York originally. So, you know, Hez, that's Uncle Hez. You know what I mean? And, you know, you gonna bump. It's a New York bump. John P. Key's bump is a little bit different. So I feel like that, like I said, I, I vibe with both of them. So I really can't call this one. This is a hard mm -hmm. choice. Hard choice. Marty. Hard choice. Your thoughts? You're not going to put me in that one. This is Latisse's interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you work. <laughs> That's how you're going to get the money out of it. <laughs> and it looks like Maurice is now in the mountains with Latisse, who made his way. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs> is giving me up, and then there goes Latisse. Okay, and then Maurice is buffering. So I need for everybody to turn off your Wi-Fi signals today, so that I can get these two great people back into the show. Uh, so until they come in, I need to know what your thoughts are. So I'm going to open up the chat while we bring back in Maurice and we bring back in Latisse to um, hear what you guys are saying. Hey, welcome back, Latisse. Hey. I, don't I was know what able to, to I'll, no, you're fine. I was able to ask the people and they all agreed that Hezekiah Walker's just gonna take it. It's you think he, they think he's just gonna take it? I don't know if he's just gonna sweep. Now, I'm not gonna say he might not be the ultimate winner, but I don't know if he's just gonna sweep. Like I said, John P. Key is a, is a tough, um, like I said, there are two different forms of church and churchy. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you go to the South, you know what I mean? Has, you know what I mean? He got that New York thing. So yeah, I don't does. know. I really, I think it's all going to determine who's on, you know what I mean? The live when they do it. Um, mm -hmm. Cause if you got more Southerners, I don't know if they're going to let his live. And if you got more New Yorkers, they ain't going to let John live. <laughs> so uh, Char Mc, uh, Michelle McDowell says it's going to be John P. Key. So she must be a Southerner. Um, Marquise Jell said, no, um, it would be a tie. You can't have a tie. Like the baby. Yeah. Face I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to be a tie too. I don't think that they're going to be able to, to figure this one out. Um, Mr. Collins from Chicago says it'll be John B. Key. He's a legend, but it's not. They're both legends. What are we talking they're about? Both legends. They're both they're legends. They're both legends. And Tony Smith, um, he says he's agree he agrees. So I'm guessing he agrees with me. Um, that it's going to be. <laughs> uh, Gigi said uh, John P. Key. So some people are trying to say John P. Key. I really think that just because of the fact that, like John P. Key back in the 90s, we would do the songs on repeat. But nowadays, you still hear every praise. You still hear grateful. Yeah. You still hear um, uh, 99 and a half on duty. You still hear 99 and a half? You probably still don't hear 99 and a half. They do. They they still play it. They, I think that with his, like I said, his um songs, I think people are gear, like leaning more to that only because his stuff is more on radio. But mm -hmm. there is no way that you're gonna hear "Show Up" come on and you're not gonna be like, "Oh, there's there's no way that that's gonna happen." So I don't mm -hmm. like I said, it may not be on radio all the time, but there is no way that certain John P. Key songs will not come on and that you won't start bumping. So I think it's, you know, like I said, radio is cool, but 
John got some 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 crazy popular albums. So I don't know. And, and he on my label. So I I'm yes, just he saying. Is. Yes, he is. And I'm speaking of saying. your label and speaking <laughs> of your body of work, who should we put you in a competition with? Maurice. Who who nobody? Should, I, I don't want to be in competition. <laughs> I don't want I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want the smoke. I don't want the smoke. Please give me 30 seconds. Maurice, who are we putting Latisse in a com in a in a competition with on Instagram on Sunday at 8 p.m.? Don't kill me if I say this. Go ahead and say it. You know you want to say it. So I think we should put a competition with Latisse Crawford and Vanessa Bell Armstrong. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Now this is about hits, Maurice. No, 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 no. This, this is not a singing competition. You you try to get me married? Oh, oh, oh! And still, even then, <laughs> I think that that would be so. I just want to. You know what? Though I would do anything in any competition just to hear you sing. I'm glad you're confident. <laughs> We're all confident in you, Latisse. Um, we have a question though, so. The next song that you're going to be, re be releasing, um, when is it? What is it? And um, do I get the first copy? She's while she thinks about that, um, she's going to be thinking about. Yep, yep. She had to go off and figure out what the song was, and then she's going to get the song and she's going to bring it back to here from the mountains. That's what's going to happen with that. Uh, <laughs> this has been fun. I can't wait until we go back and re-edit this all together without everybody jumping off at three different times. Latisse, did you go and get the song? You see how the devil try to do? Every time. Won't you you see how the devil try to do? Every time. No, I have to come out very, very soon. You guys are going to love it. It's got a little bit of old school. It's got a little bit of new school. It's got a little old to Kimberrell in there. So I think that you guys are going to love it. It's my version of Churchy. Um, new school, churchy, um, but I think y'all gonna love it and y'all gonna bump to it. So look for it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming very soon. I can't wait to hear it now. And then she's gonna go off. She had to again. What she's doing this time is she wants to go get her social media, and then she's gonna bring it back and give it to it. Um, I want to pull up some of these comments. So Kanika said, "Has um, Shar said show up is her jam. Mine too. Oh, they're battling." Gerald Pace said, I have been trying to arrive at a winner and I can't choose. I already chose. I know. Listen. I can't choose, girl. I know. I can't, I can't choose either. I'm going to take it. And then um, I know that um, Latisse would want to hear this. Gigi said, but I think when John start pulling off stuff off the archives, yep, just what Latisse said, many bumps in the wall. There are many bumps in the wall, but, ooh, somebody just said something. Can I pull it up, Latisse? I know we only got two more on. minutes and I'm going to let you get to Marquise said Latisse and mm. No. Mm. Mar Marquise, why are you mm. why are you in these streets starting stuff? I mean I, 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 My only <laughs> hope is that when it does happen, that Latisse doesn't use Teddy um Riley's engineer, which is currently the one that's putting together her live feed for this interview. That's funny to me. That don't got to be funny to you because that was funny to me. So I'm going to try to bring Latisse up one more. No, nope, she's still frozen. So, all right. So um, I need everybody at the sound of my voice. Huh? Listen to me now. You listen to me. You listen to me good. I need everybody right now to go to Latisse's page and let her know that you are supporting her, that you're supporting her music, that you're supporting Amazing, because Amazing is an amazing song. Amazing is an amazing video. You all definitely need to go and check that out. And then um, I need you guys to go and support Maurice Griffin. Prove Me is the joint. It is everything, and it is right there for you. Everything that you need to be saved in your life is um, in that Prove Me. Maurice, what do you have coming up real soon? Well, I have a tour that's coming up. It's called The Glory Experience. And whether it's physical or virtual, it's going to happen. And uh, <clears throat> I also am releasing a new record, of course. Well, a new single in a couple of months. I'm doing that. And I'm doing some other things with my um, time during quarantine. So I'm actually working on my YouTube channel, which is called MGTV. Stands for Maurice Griffin Television. Go on there, subscribe if you want to, and love on me a little bit. I'll love on you. You'll see some great content. It's going to premiere 
the first Friday in May, May 1st, 2020. So be on the lookout for that. Please be on the lookout for that because it's going to be an amazing opportunity, an amazing endeavor. For those who want to go into Latisse's information, it is at Latisse Crawford. You know how to spell it. L-A-T-I-C-E-C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. And it's Latisse Crawford. Um, that's how you pronounce it. Don't put Leticia on it. Don't call her Latrice. Don't call her Lala because that's not Latisse. 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 T-T. T-T. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Somebody loves you, babe. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I love, love you back. And they still <laughs> bump there. I still bump there, too. Uh, thank you, Latisse Crawford, for coming on and bumping with us today. We truly appreciate you. And when the next time we do this interview, mm -hmm. it's going to be face to face. And we're just going to both freeze like this the whole time and talk. So that people think oh. that we're frozen, but they're not really going to know that we're still moving our mouths and talking. It's just going to look frozen as an anniversary just like that of today's interview. Before we go, before we go, Latisse, remember when we said a battle with you and Young Crawley would be awesome? I wanted to bring in. Yeah. Crawley. She here? <laughs> well, here we are. Let's go. We're not doing no battle. What kind of battle? I never sing with that. Sing up against that. Amazing Grace, let's go. <laughs> I would never. Listen, Latisse is still frozen in time right now. I can't believe that you're on the show with us right now. Uh, she hasn't moved that expression yet. And then uh -oh. so I'm gonna show that they lying on this online. This is too funny. She's gonna come back out and then come back in. I love this show because everybody keeps bouncing. <laughs> it's like a club, like the VIP section. <laughs> people get in, people go right back what out. What you got on this show? Um, I tried I try to do some surprises today, Maurice, and then the, the devil got busy. I don't understand what is going on. I'm going to hope that she's going to come out and then watch this. Listen, right now, I'm just having fun with the show now. I can edit all this out later. But until I edit all this out, I'm going to have fun bringing people in and out. So those who are on the stream, y'all just keep on watching as we figure out this technology. I would like to introduce to Yana Crawley. Yana Crawley, have you met Latisse Crawford? I've never, I've never met her. How you doing? Come on now, that's my sister. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, Miss Crawley, you're from where? Where do we know you? Um, you know me from, well, I'm from Washington, D.C., um, but you would know me nationally or, you know, anything platform-wise from um, season two, Sunday Best. I was a contestant on there. Mm -hmm. You were a contestant on yeah. there. And yes. do you remember ever singing um, against or with Miss Crawford? I think I vaguely remember. Yes. Yes. Because hmm. she has and, one of those voices. I vaguely. No, I remember. I remember. I do. And do you remember a young man by the name of Maurice Griffin that's uh, sitting on top of your head right now? Maurice Griffin, Maurice Chris, the little guy with the high, you know, he has high time. Yes, I remember him. I remember him. Yes. Can you take, can you take me behind the scenes? Can you take me behind the scenes of Sunday's Death and what it was like working with these two characters right here? Oh, oh my God. You know what? We established such a camaraderie. So let me stop playing. We established such a camaraderie like on there. And although it was a competition, like we still, we were family. We were helping each other out. Um, it was just like, okay, girl, like kill this song. All right, come on. It's your turn. Like we knew it was a competition and we knew we were competing against each other. But we really, we really became a family, seriously. So afterwards, we still are a family. Yeah. Now, the Clark sisters put out a movie, and you get to see a lot of the behind the scenes. When mm -hmm. the season um, of Sunday Best movie premieres on the iDream Network in two years, yes. what are we going to learn during that movie about maybe even not regarding you three, but maybe some people else that were on the show? Maybe the one that would um, take cigarette breaks every commercial, or the one that would. Um, the one that was singing um, Alana's Morissette in the bathroom um, to, to make her voice right. Like, or he, or he could have been singing Alana's Morissette. I don't know, no judgment. 
What are we going to learn in the season best movie? I think we will learn that uh, the people will learn what they would take away is that this is ministry for all of us. It wasn't just about the competition. Yeah, it was a competition, but we're all individually um, ministers of the gospel and some of us sing gospel and, um, you know, secular music. I don't even call it secular music, but we're ministers. And so I think what they would take away from it also is um, that it's a it's. It's one that you really, really have to work at. It's very, very hard. And we're all nervous. Like, it's not a thing like we get up there and we're so sure of ourselves. Like, no, we're all having, you know, these times of nervousness, not really wanting to do this because this is something that we've been doing. It's a gift from God. And it's really not, we didn't really want to do it as far as competition. But hey, it was a competition. But um, I think that they would learn that um, not all of us are, uh, we're, some of us are still together as family, you know, even afterwards. Um, and that is just a, it's, it's, it's one of them things. It's, it's just, it's a nervousness, but you know, we're in there and we're working hard, just trying to get, just trying to belt them notes out and things and get them songs together as, as, it, as the behind the scene things go along. So, um, Miss Crowley, yo, yo, um, earring hitting against that mic is it's almost turned- like a melody. That we want you to sing. So, before you sing that melody, I need to ask Latisse a question. So, me and her can pretend like y'all not here, okay? Just me and you, Latisse. Latisse, were you mad when she won? Were you just a little bit mad when you found out she won? Just a little bit, a little bit mad. No, just a bit. like no, you be messy. Seriously, <laughs> like right, right. Why can't you be messy, right? No, seriously, I wasn't. I feel like that. Like she said, we and were all. Was- like a fa- yeah, we were all literally we were all like a family. I think that I, if Yanni remember, she and I had had a conversation. You can't hear me. Y'all can't no, hear me. We're good. We're good. We're good. You can hear me. Mm-hmm. Yanni and I had had a conversation before she won, and I don't know if you remember Yanni, but I told you you were gonna win because at that time she was she was battling between when she left show what she was gonna do. See, I don't know. I think I'm gonna just go back to, and I was like, "Nah, girl, you can't. You can't go back to that. This is this gonna be yours. You're gonna have to talk it outside. I don't say what we're doing. I can't have a moment. We were talking outside. I was talking like, "Nah, this is for you. God brought you here. This is for you." But Yami and I had met at the DC auditions and were cool then, so I wasn't upset at all. I was happy for her. I just wanted a Coca-Cola and a cheeseburger and I couldn't have that when I was on the show. So when oh, I got off, that's the first thing that I went and did was I had a Coca-Cola and a cheeseburger. And I celebrated her. I was happy. I was happy for her. <laughs> what was with the food restrictions? They put y'all on diets? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, no, but I'm about 500 pounds on the inside and we didn't have a whole lot of time. We to be know. eating, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we were, we were running literally. Our show was taped in two weeks. We didn't have the long extent like some of the other seasons did. So we were taping sometimes two shows in a day, going straight to rehearsal. Um, but then also sometimes Donald would kind of give us an eye, like y'all better not be eating that before you go. Saying, and so you know, as soon as it was over, I promise you, the night that they was like, "All right, you going home?" All right, <laughs> and I cried a little bit, and then I went on to that diner and I had me a good old cheeseburger with bacon. And a Coca-Cola <laughs> with ice. With don't forget the ice. Um, ice. So Maurice, what song will you be writing that will maybe feature both of the ladies on mm. the on the? Hmm. He trying to take over your whole project. <laughs> I'm trying to create a project, huh? Yeah, they already did, though. <laughs> you know what? Um, I I don't know. I, that's a hard question. I will write one though. That's okay. I'll write it. Don't worry. I got you. I'll write it. I'll write it. <laughs> <laughs> will be done. Hallelujah. Tr- oh, that's a quarantine song. I just came up with that. I just wrote that in my head. I, I heard it somewhere. I don't remember. So, my last question. <laughs> my last question before we get out of here. Um, when all is said and done. Will we ever have a tour again that will feature all of you guys together? Absolutely. I'm in hopes. I think we should. Yes. Yeah, I, I think would we love should. to. I think we should. Especially with all of our new music. All of us have been working and creating and writing. Um, so, see what I'm saying? Come on, snaps. So I think that, you know, we definitely need <laughs> to have a, a reunion I cannot tour hear her. or, or so something. Mad. 
Oh, um, no, I don't know why. I can't hear you. So, y Yana, can you hear me though? I can hear you and Maurice, but I can't Ooh. hear my sister. So, this is what happens. Me? happens. What? Go out and come back. And we're about to end the show. So, log out and then come right back and then we'll end it. Because, again, I'm editing this together. The, for the people that are watching live, congratulations. You get all the behind the scenes. When this airs again tonight, all this is going to be gone. So, that's what's the <laughs> fun you. of watching the show live. You get to see all of this. Um, Javon sounds like a production project for yeah, yes, this is absolutely a production project for me. I'm gonna make this thing work like it ain't never worked before, huh? Y'all gonna be working in Jesus' name in an unquarantined world. Amen. Yeah, now can you hear Latisse now? Say something, sis. Hey, yes, can you hear me? <gasps> yes, yes, come on. <laughs> My next question, because I got a couple more questions. Now, listen, we're 11 minutes over. And for those of you who are watching, you got to go. Bye. But come back tonight and watch the show, um, the edited version tonight. For those of you guests that are in here, you ain't going nowhere. Listen, we, what you got to do? Ain't nothing else going on. We in quarantine season. Quarantine, um, quarantine. Now, because the president asked me to go and drink disinfectant, I got to go grab me something to drink, a sip real quick of my bleach. While I do that, I need you guys to ponder the idea. You know how the Clark sisters aren't really touring anymore? The walls aren't really touring anymore? They really don't have, you know, Virtue ain't touring anymore. What about just the three of you in one group? The name of the group can be called the Dream Singers, off of I Dream Media, the Dream Singers, wait for it, Okay. Wait for it. And the first, why are you laughing at me, Maurice? Oh, because of the way Carly looking at me, the way Carly looking. <laughs> I'm just me. waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Guys, that, brings we're gonna keep waiting. <laughs> that brings me to my next question. When you all were singing and doing the auditions, who was unable to hide the expression on their face more? Maurice, Latisse, or you, Miss Crawley? Who was, and who was it easy to read? when things weren't going well for a thing. I, 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 I know I wear my, uh, my face. I, my, I can't hide. I don't have a poker face. So it might, it might have been me. I don't, was, I don't have a poker mouth. I, I just right, keep saying right. stuff sometimes. <laughs> I don't have a poker face. I don't have a poker mouth. Poker mouth. Okay. I don't have a poker mouth. And what about you, Laurie? <laughs> okay, so I'll say this. So when I got... um. Um, disqualified, not disqualified, I'm not disqualified. So um, the top 20, they took 10 out. I was one of the 10 that left. When they didn't say my name, I had to hold my face because they said, you know, make sure you hold your composure because you never know if you're going to be the way <laughs> with the thing on your face. But they, they say my name, they're like, we thank y'all for supporting. All right, see y'all later on the next episode. And I was like, and then I go to television and I'm seeing my face, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my you God. can't break, baby. You can't break. You cannot <laughs> break. You can't. You really oh my can't. God. <laughs> that was crazy. It was really intense because this is your life you're talking about. This is your yeah. career. This is your opportunity mm -hmm. to, to take new steps into what you, you know, called, you feel like you're called to do. And mm -hmm. so you get a no, you like, this is no national television life. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> So, you know, but it was all worth it because look where I'm at now, you know. Yeah. It took, it took that to get me to where I am today. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm grateful. Come on, present place. No, seriously, because I believe even if I didn't take on time, I think it just really set us up, giving us this wider platform because, you know, 1.2 million. I mean, back in that time, everybody was watching, like, Everybody was setting yes. up PVRs and, and everything, and not taking away from the present time, but I just know back then the views were just yeah. enormous. Like it was amazing. Yeah. So I just believe that we're all kind of right, kind of eating off of that platform. And I thank God mm -hmm. that we're able to stay relevant, able to keep pushing out, you know, music and just staying, you know, in the people's faces and staying in God's presence. Holly, yeah. yeah. so listen, you better quicken. <laughs> this is 11 years later you know what I mean 11, 11. years later um, many that. of seasons in between you yeah. know we're all still you know I've been doing this now full time for 11 years 
full time, <laughs> eleven years. Can I say so? Something? Yes, I'm gonna be biased right now. Go. And I don't care. I'm gonna be messy now. I'm gonna be messy now. Be yes. messy. Uh, I really believe that season two is the best season because they're the most working people in the industry today. You think so? Come I on, Mari. So. I'm trying to think of other seasons. Da, da, it's da. us three. See, I was doing the same thing. I was trying to do the math right. in my head. Right. <laughs> I was like, I'm mm -hmm, and then Ross. remove the two. Uh, <laughs> got, uh, who else came out with something? Clifton Ross. Um, Zez, John. So can you say collectively mm -hmm. as a season, we have more people that are more consistent in, in uh, presently? And so, okay, because yeah, other seasons right. do, they do have people that are working yeah. and they're very much successful. But I see what you're yeah. saying as a group. Like it's me. Group, you got okay, Alexis, got Joshua, you. Tasha, yeah. Leandria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they still Amber. working. Tasha, yeah. like all of, all of them, they're still working. But I get yeah. what you're saying, us as a collective group. Yeah. Yeah, most most uh, seasons have one, two, or maybe three or four. But we have, we, have, we, have, we have the most that's still out there or did something. Um, with uh, Sunday Best or because gotcha. of Sunday Best. Gotcha. Now, because this is a show where I do have to ask those questions that maybe others won't ask on the show, I have to ask you, were you all satisfied with the, with the um, current winner? Not that the person um, that the runner up or the third best or the fourth best or not that Chris Fell, because we know Chris Fell is an amazing singer from a mm -hmm. great lineage of, of singing, singing. Mm -hmm. and his family. And in his life period, but were you satisfied with the recent season and maybe how it played out throughout the season? I'm gonna say this: I, I feel like that what people don't understand about when you go on shows like that, while they're only seeing the singing part, the competition part, the people who are on that show they see us as as people. You know what I mean? And so sometimes I think that it goes beyond just their gift, but they see something else in them in their person, you know what I'm saying? In them that says, okay, it's their time. It's their, you know, they just need it. It's, or not, it's not, I don't think that it's always, you know, picking about or thinking about like, you know, um, I think it's about who reaches the, the, the audience yeah. and the people yeah. the most, the mm -hmm. masses the most, not necessarily in sound voice or anything, but just something about them. Something about them makes sense. And then I think too, for just for us as a person, I knew when I went on Sunday Best that mm -hmm. that wasn't my time. Yeah. It just, that, that just wasn't the time that I was supposed to win. It just wasn't the time that it was supposed to be my moment. What I got from that record deal, reality show, like I said, 11 years of work, two major labels, you can't really beat, you know what I'm saying? What you get when it's yours. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When it's that all said and done, would you each do it again? Before, when Yanni couldn't hear me, I don't know if you remember the conversation that we had. And I said to you, like, Yanni, this is yours. She did. This is yours. You're going to win this she one. Did. This is yours. She it was did. her time. It was her season. It was that moment was for her to prove something to her and what God was trying to do for her in her life in that season. And I don't think that the the, the, the viewers don't get to see the brokenness. Mm -hmm. The viewers don't get to see the healing that we do on that show. Yeah, they don't get to see we what it does for us when we leave. Exactly. You know what I mean? She sure yeah. did. She said we that all came me. there with a different story reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I need it. And, and, and if I can piggyback on that, because um, a lot of people don't know, I was dealing with depression on that show, like fighting through mm -hmm. it. And I was fighting through it with my singing. Cause that's the way I knew how. So she's right. I need like God. And even though me, I didn't even want to do it. I woke up late. I told the people I'm not going to this competition. I had somebody to come wait for wow. me. I mean, I wasn't even dressed. It was cold as I don't know what in DC. I went out huh. with a leather jacket, <laughs> a t-shirt and some jeans. And I said, Lord, if you don't move this line and I'm going home. Cause I live right up the street from BET studios at the time. As soon as I said that, the man came outside, y'all are singers, came outside and said, y'all are singers, y'all need to be inside the building. Even with that, it was like a process. God was taking me through a mm. process because I love to circumvent things. If things don't work out for me, just within an instant, I would quit. So yeah, she's right. I needed that. I had to fulfill that process, not so much just to get that title, but to commit myself to that process and go through it for the finish. Mm. Yeah. That's mm. true. So um, the qu the answer is, to the question, would you all do it over again if you had to do it over again, based off the results of what's happened since, you would all say yes? Yeah, I would. No. <laughs> no. 
I said back then. Too. Back then. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Back then, yeah. Now. Oh, now. back then? Back then, yeah, I had fun, but no. No, no, no. No, no, Today? no. No. Jamaris. Okay. No. There is no sunshine, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> that part. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. You all have been amazing guests, and I so, so grateful to you, Miss Crawley, to you, Mr. Griffin, for coming in and surprising um, our friend, Miss Latisse Crawford. Yes. So thank you guys so much, and you all stay blessed and stay encouraged and keep releasing music, okay? Thank you so much. See y'all. Love y'all. Thank you. Now, um, Miss Crawford, I love you too. if you don't mind sharing your social media so that people can find out where you are and how to get there. My social media is Latisse Crawford. It's the same on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Latisse Crawford. There's no R. L-A-T-I-C-E-C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. Please make sure that you stay tuned. Put those notifications on because I have music coming. I'm talking about in like weeks, I have music coming. So please go on the page and stay, stay, stay tuned. Wonderful. And thank you so much for putting up with the surprises today and letting us <laughs> uh, just kind of share some love with you from people that um, love and support you and have been loving and supporting you, you. for so long. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching thank the show you. today. If you will, please like and share today's broadcast so that more people can fall in love with Latisse Crawford the way that I have fallen in love with Latisse Crawford. Um, so until next time, <laughs> take care of yourself and each other. God bless. That.